Hey guys, Brian back with another video today. You know, ever since we've moved into this house, we've been trying to figure out what we're gonna do with this deep abyss of a hallway that has just been useless and turned into a store hall. This house was converted to an open floor plan, so this 1960s hallway doesn't serve any purpose into the kitchen. But what this kitchen does lack is a lot of storage. So if you wanna see how we turn this into this, stick around for another home project. The first step in this project was a little bit of cleanup, getting everything out of the hallway and laying up the plans where I could mark off the walls. I had to set the front wall, which was about three inches set back from the plane of the existing hallway. And I used a level and transferred that with a laser to mark that line so that when I built this wall out, it all line up in plane. The next step was to remove the base trim right on the walls that we're gonna build new ones on and take some rough dimensions of the overall pre-hung door kit to double check against the drawing. I always find it a lot easier just to take really accurate dimensions and build these frames rough on the bench. This way you can get everything flat and lined up, bring it upstairs, shim everything in place, plumb and level, and screw it in place. This way you're not stick building in place and going back and forth between the miter saw. Once I've got the wall set plumb and level, using the laser again to line it up with the wall, it's ready to start on the back wall. Same process, putting the frame together on the bench, bringing it back up, shimming it in place, and setting your screws directly into studs. With the walls framed and the sheetrock going up, it's finally starting to look like a real closet. Proceed by taping all the joints and covering up all the screw heads with joint compound, and then moving on to paint. With the walls done, we can now set the door in place. Basically the same process as setting the wall. This is a pre-hung kit, so it's pretty straightforward. You set this in place, make sure it's flush with the front of the wall, set it plumb and level, and screw it in place. And then try to hide as many of the screw holes underneath the hinges as possible to minimize how many holes we have to fill. With the door set, I pulled it off so I can set the trim. Using a combination square, I'm setting a quarter inch reveal and then taking those measurements to the miter saw to cut this trim and once again gluing this trim up on the bench. If you're not familiar with these, these are actually called Collins Corner Clamps and they're really, really handy with doing small moldings and casings. They can hold them together while you're setting it in place with the nailer and this way the miters don't break while the glue's setting up. With the door in place and the walls painted, I now install the finished trim. I actually pre-painted this when I put it in so to make it easier to install and just fill the nail holes and touch up paint. I 
Another improvement to this closet was to change this hallway light fixture to a modern surface mount LED light fixture. And this is pretty straightforward. Using the existing box, I extended with some Romex from the BX to fit this light fixture, installed the frame on the ceiling, and this light pretty much clamps right into place. The last big step on this project was this transformation from the hallway to the closet was a combination of use of a laser level, stud finder, and a level. And the first part of this process for this wire shelving is to set the top rail because this is what the vertical rails essentially hang on. It's a combination of using studs as well as some heavy duty toggle bolts where they couldn't be, but making sure there was plenty of fasteners to hold what would surely be a pantry worth of food in the future. Once the vertical rail is in place, you can set all the brackets and they're all adjustable, but you want to line them up. And then cutting the wire shelving to size and using these end caps to cover up the cut ends. The last step was to put in some finishing touches. I ended up hanging up a broom rack on the side of it, as well as installing the final hardware. With the closet now done, I could focus on the front closet. Using the rear two-thirds of this closet for the pantry, it left the one-third in the front to install a door, some walls, and some coat racks, which turned out to be a pretty decent coat closet for the front. Once again, turning a hallway into a bonus of two storage areas. And there you have it, an otherwise unusable 1960s hallway with a Old antiquated light converted, a little bit of carpentry, sheetrock paint, and electrical. Probably about six, seven hundred dollars worth of investment between the wire racks and all the lumber and building materials, and a little bit of effort of time to leave the place a little bit better than I found it. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.